Hi there, and welcome to our little chat time here. I hope this is going to be good because I've got something really good, brand new, starting off. Uh, this is all about losing some weight. We've talked about the fact that there is this COVID-19, not the virus, but the COVID-19 pounds <laughs> that, that can kind of sneak up on you. And so uh, we're going to do something special, and I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, but we're going to do something special to try to help those of us who in, you know, this change of schedule and all that we're doing, picked up a little bit of weight. The freshman 15, you go to college, you pick up 15 pounds. And then uh, when you have a virus and you're locked down and shut down and all that, you might pick up 19 extra pounds. So we're going to deal with that. But I want to say this to you. A lot of folks um, are really struggling right now because you you have not worked, you have not earned an income. It is not pretty. Some of you are losing jobs. On our radio program, you know, we had a guy, he didn't have a job, sister died, everything falls apart. And I tell you, uh, you, you got to call us if that's where you are. Please let us help you in some way, if at all possible. We want to help. Because um, this is this is not an easy time for anybody. So please uh, look at the videos that we have at New Life. NewLife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Look at the tip sheets on how to get through this. And I've created all sorts of stuff, ideas. Just ask the person at the other end of 1-800-NEW-LIFE. What do you have available? I'm really struggling. I need some help. And see what they can do. Uh, because it's not easy. You shouldn't feel ashamed if this is tough for you. I tell you, I'm, I'm ready to just explode, kind of. I want to get out of this. I want to get back in routine. Uh, quite frankly, I'm ready to take a trip again. Because I, you know, I travel all the time, and I haven't been on a plane since early March. And, um, you know, there's been some, so many good and great blessings. But also, uh, it'll be good to get our old life back. So, I want to talk to you about Lose It For Life. I also want to tell you that there is something that could really help you right along with Lose It For Life, and that is the Life Recovery Bible and the Life Recovery Workbook for Eating Disorders. Now, sometimes we associate the term eating disorder with people that don't weigh enough, but this, you know, we just start right off here, Dave Stoop and I, the first example we give, it's about, you know, the addiction to food. And uh, it's talking about when we become overly uh, dependent or unhealthily dependent on food as comfort. Nothing wrong with food uh, being comfort food. Nothing wrong with that at all. But if, it's, uh, if we need comfort every day and we need so much of it, you know, uh, I love mashed potatoes and gravy and fried chicken and all that. If I eat that, um, more than like in a month or something, that's, that's not going to be good, uh, most likely for most people. So um, these are helpful things using the 12 steps. But also, here's the resource we're talking about, Lose It For Life. And uh, this book helps so many people. It was a book and a workbook. It was put together as a book and workbook combination. So you've got the chapter and then the workbook right after it. But here's where I want to start today looking at this. Uh, when I was living in Southern California, uh, it was typical that I would be called to fill in uh, for Pastor Rick Warren out at Saddleback. In fact, about, uh, I don't know, six months ago, I flew out and filled in for him. But they were doing a series, and uh, it was on uh, different problems and, you know, like the seven sins kind of thing. And so uh, Rick called and said, uh, and I think when he called me, I was uh, eating a Big Mac or something like that. But when he uh, called, you know, he asked me if I would come out and do the, the Sunday that they were going to talk about gluttony. Now, I was happy to do that, but I'll tell you what else. He kind of said, you know, I think somebody uh, could do it better uh, that had credibility in that area. And what I was happy about was that he wasn't calling saying, I'm going to do a thing on pornography and I need somebody with credibility or sexual integrity. You know, he was fine with that. No problem. But he really felt like uh, he wanted somebody to come out and talk 
who had had helped other people and uh, at the time we were doing uh, lose it for life groups out at saddleback so i did and uh, some of the things that in this session um, i want to talk to you about were things i presented in that first sermon that i ever did on lose it for life but i remember talking about the fact that when i was growing up while other people had posters up of uh, Farrah Fawcett and things like that, you know, my heroes were uh, Mrs. Butterworth and little Miss Debbie, uh, Mrs. Fields, you know, things like that. And I really did not know uh, when I was younger how food worked. And I remember sitting in front of a television set and I would eat like an entire can, huge can they came in cans this big of uh, potato chips and i didn't really know that that was the thing that was making me fat uh, when i went to work in a clothing store uh and during college um they would order what was known as a whataburger quad quad well that was four pieces of meat and four pieces of cheese and french fries and somehow the other people working in the store, it didn't affect them the way it did me, but I just, I gained weight. I didn't really associate it with that, but I was really, really heavy. And it wasn't until I came up with a way to just gradually lose the weight. And I had lost weight many times uh, fast, you know, on the Atkins diet, not the Chet Atkins diet where you just pick at your food, but the real life Atkins diet. Lost it fast, but I'd always gain it back very, very quickly. So I came up with a plan. I implemented the plan and the plan still works today. And every bit of research that's ever been done on weight loss, it, it just supports the original lose it for life plan. The thing that I think is important is that we all have kids um, or we know kids. And they're looking at us and they're going to look like us and they want to know what are we doing and what's important to us. And so I, I think for the sake of, of our own health, for the sake of our heritage, the future, the next generation, um, we need to do something about staying fit way up later in life and be sure that we never, ever give up learning new things seeing things from a different perspective. Now, a lot of people know me from, from uh, Every Man's Battle and trying to lose the obsession with pornography and uh, any kind of compulsive behavior that goes with it. Well, you know, there's actually a parallel here and you could call it the pornographication of food. Now, now how does that relate to pornography? Well, pornography, you have an image, supposedly promises a lot, but delivers a counterfeit. And here in food, you know, we, they try to make food look good. Uh, they, they, it's junk. It, um, you know, it, it feels good going down, all of that. But it's a counterfeit of a true relationship uh, with a person or true healthy comfort that we get from you know being with other people or uh, even the comfort of good whole healthy food so um, you know we can get lured in to food because of the way people present it and you talk about it and all of that and at some point we have to say i, I need to stop look at this and see how is it impacting me because most of us uh, want to be healthy, but on the way we get off track. And um, a lot of times we don't literally know that we need help. Uh, many people have heard me uh, talk about watching what not to wear and this resistant person finally uh, surrenders and gets help with the eating. And, uh, you know, the, the host says, you know, sometimes you don't know you need help till you get help. And that's the way it is with this. I know people that never dreamed there was an emotional connection between how they felt and how much they ate. And there is. 
Like me, there are people that don't realize certain foods put on the weight, certain uh, foods take it off. Uh, some foods increase metabolism, some foods lower it. Some people don't equate high sugar with high carbohydrates. You know, with everything that is white flour, white rice, white bread, it's just turned into sugar. It's a high sugar diet when those are uh, simple carbohydrates versus complex carbohydrates. So um, along the way, we get confused. And what I want to do is try to, to, to try to provide a path toward what I would call weightlessness. And in weightlessness, I'm no longer uh, defined by my weight. Now, a lot of people weigh uh, to such a degree that people make assumptions or judgments about them based on their weight. Whereas this state of weightlessness that we're going toward is where my weight's not even an issue. I'm not too heavy, not too light. I'm just me. You can look to me, look in my eyes. You're not just obsessing over how much I weigh. I remember working with a woman. She was so upset that her husband was a crack addict. She weighed approximately 320 pounds. How can you talk about his crack problem when, you know, we're not talking about your weight problem? And she acted like it was just wasn't even part of her life. Well, it was a big part of her life and you couldn't ignore it. And I wasn't willing to. Here's the reality. John 10, 10 says this, and it applies to eating and fitness. John 10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal and to destroy and to kill. But my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So when we look at food, what Satan wants to do is steal everything possible from us and use food to do it. He'll use a lot of other things too. He'll make, um, he'll make every effort to hit us where we are the weakest. And you know, you always have to eat. Like if you're an alcoholic, you don't have to go in a bar. You don't have to go in a liquor store. Um, but when you eat, you have to eat. So you have to learn how to do it in a different way rather than just give it up altogether. And so when we talk about this problem, we're not just talking about eating differently. We're talking about a thing that is called the it. Lose it for life. And that's what this whole program is all about. It's not so much about what we're eating as what's eating us. If we can resolve those things, boy, does that ever change everything so that we're not feeding hurt, pain, resentment, uh, some kind of a, um, uh, maybe a wound or abuse or trauma uh, from the past. So we want to do everything we can to, uh, to deal with the internal and then some of the educational things about food. We want to do some things differently and it, re and it requires this, this amazing thing called a willingness to surrender. Now, that's my introduction. The next time we get together, here's what we're going to start talking about. We're going to, we're going to talk about some very tough truths uh, for, our, for us to comprehend. And uh, such as that your body needs to be treated as a temple. Uh, we're going to talk about that. And um, a lot of people treat their body like a fraternity house, not a temple. But that's where we're going to start changing some uh, concepts in our mind, our thinking, look at God's truth as it applies to this. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to call one Andrew New Life and get a copy of Lose It for Life. It really could make all the difference in the world. So you come and join me next time and we'll, we'll continue uh, to deal with all of the concepts in Lose It for Life. Now, as we close up, let me just say this. Uh, it's a tough time. We're here for you. Uh, we love you. We care about you, all of us at New Life. And, and we just don't want you to struggle alone. So call us. Don't be ashamed. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And um, I'm going to be right back here again tomorrow. And we'll talk about a lot of great stuff, more about Lose It for Life, and I think the principles, even if you don't struggle with eating, 
are going to help you in some other areas of your life or help you help somebody else. We'll see you then.